Hey, this is Matthew. Welcome back to Nerd News Today for another Japanese pro wrestling figure review. Today on deck, we've got a figure of another guy that you might not know that well, but I think he's absolutely worth knowing about. And that would be Tatsuhito Takaiwa. And yeah, my Gaijin tongue is going to butcher his name in particular because I had a lot of trouble figuring out how to actually say Takaiwa. Is it Takaiwa? Is it Takaiwa? You know, I had to watch some videos, and at the end of the day, I still feel like he's one of those names I'm just never going to get right. So apologies for butchering the Japanese language today. So this is another Kara Pro figure from the New Japan Superstar Figure Collection. He's number 32, as you can see on the top left corner of him, right above the New Japan logo. And you might look at this figure and say, well, this is a rather plain looking dude. And well, you wouldn't be wrong about that in terms of his look. He might not have the most memorable appearance or most exciting appearance rather, but he's a pretty awesome guy. And I think he's really someone that you should check out. So I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you're going to want to look up who this guy is and see more about him. So Takaiwa here has been in New Japan. He's been in Zero One. He's been in NOAA. He's been in Big Japan. He's been in FMW. He's been in DDT. He's been in War. He's been basically everywhere you could possibly wrestle in Japan. He's made quite a name for himself. He's also a two-time GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion. He's won bunches of tag team championships, including two runs with Otani for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship tag belts. And most importantly, he's also been an IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champ in a match where he actually defeated Jushin Dundon Liger to win that belt. So again, you can see why I think this guy is really worth knowing about because he's done some pretty big things. So at the front of the box here is pretty plain. It's got this kind of gravelly background, which I don't really think does him any favors in terms of making him pop out even more in the stands. But at least he's got some nice color going on here, and especially with his logo as well. It really does kind of make it pop a little bit better than it would otherwise. There's a cock right in there showing that this figure is from 2000. And let's take a look at the back. And there's just, again, another very nice, basically upper body shot of Taikaiwa to give us an example of how his likeness looks versus his toy. Which might not be the best translation, but we'll talk about that in a moment. And the back of the packaging here has just a very nice bio about Taikaiwa, which unfortunately I don't read Japanese, so I couldn't tell you word for word what it's saying. But hey, here's a Google Translate attempting to do its best to figure out what it's saying. I do always find it funny how these figures have like just really nice glossy fronts and the back is just boring old corrugated cardboard or whatever that material is. So yeah, that part humors me quite a great deal. But that's enough about the figure in the packaging. Let's go ahead and take him out and check out Taikaiwa from all angles. And here is our Taikaiwa out of the packaging now. And once again, he's not the most impressive looking figure once you get him out of the box either. He's basically just a guy wearing knee pads, shooter boots, and black trunks. So there's not much to discuss in terms of like extravagance, but there are some interesting things to note about this figure as you take a look at him. But first things first, let's talk about the likeness and is it good? Uh, you know, this is not one of the better likenesses. I mean, sculpt wise, it's not that bad actually. Sculpt wise, it's okay. But the paint job on his face is what really is not so great. And it's that his eyes are kind of sloppy. Look, they're a little kind of big and just not painted that well. So uh, that kind of detracts from the look for me. The mustache also just seems like it's almost a little bit out of place. Even the goatee looks like it's kind of off center even. So, you know, they kind of did a little bit of a haphazard job on this particular figure. I don't know how others look compared to this one here that I've got. But for my money, you know, sculpt wise, it's not that bad, but the paint job just kills it. And kind of same thing with the hair too, you know, like he's got a little bit of a thinner hairline, I guess you could say. And that's not always easy to capture either. I mean, we've seen Mattel have similar problems with other figures. You know, in this case here, they did, the, I guess, the best they could. But yeah, you know, it's just missing a lot of the detail that he's really known for having with his hair and his facial hair as well. It's just kind of bland and yeah, not, not so great. As for the body, I think they got that actually pretty well. Uh, you know, he is very, very, uh, as you can see here, fairly nipply because it's rather cold outside. You know, unlike American pressing toys that don't have nips, the Japanese ones in most cases do. So go figure. But in terms of like his body shape, I mean, that I think they actually got 100%. They completely nailed how his body looks. You know, he's got a more of a stocky, short kind of body. You know, the way he looks, it kind of reminds me a lot of Dean Malenko. And even the way he wrestles actually reminds me a lot of Dean Malenko too. So, you know, it's kind of easy to see that going on here with this figure. Because again, we've got simple black trunks, we've got the big knee pads and shooter boots. And speaking of those two things here, one of the things I love about this figure is that his knee pads say McDavid on them, which is an actual brand of knee pad. And there is no way in heck that this company who made these figures actually sought out permission from McDavid to make these figures. And same thing here with his socks. He's got like some kind of logo on them. Yeah, I don't know uh, which logo that is or what company that is. I don't think it's an American one if it is anybody. But yeah, I'm pretty positive they pulled something that original San Francisco toy makers did with their ECW line. And that's make something now, beg for forgiveness later. And yeah, I doubt McDavid or whoever else is on his socks ever sued New Japan for this kind of thing. But it's kind of just fun to note that it's there. And 
it's a big F you to copyright licenses everywhere. Although speaking of copyright licenses, can't ignore that giant New Japan logo made in China on his butt there. So in terms of articulation, our figure has pretty much the same as every car pro does. He can do this with his arms, which I believe in most cases the arms will pop out just like that. You can see, and they'll pop back in more or less like that. There you go. And the waist should move. Here we go. First time being moved in 20 years. Let's hear if that snap crackle pop. Oh, that was disappointing. There's no pop. Well, that was a big setup for very little payoff, but yeah, there you guys go. You can see it's, you know, the same articulation we get with every figure. But the upside again is that, you know, their arms are, are all removable. So if you find someone who's got similarly sized arms, you can pop them out and at least do some swapping there with them. So if you've never seen a Taikaiwa match, I recommend you guys check out his match with Yoshinobu Kanemaru, which is when he won the GHC uh, Junior Heavyweight Championship, and also his match with Naomichi Marafuji. Both very, very good matches. I think they'll make you a fan about him, and I think those are probably like some of the best examples of his work from closer to like our era of wrestling. But again, he's done a lot of things in wrestling. He's even had mask versus mask matches because there was a brief time where he was uh, Black Tiger, in fact, which was a gimmick that Eddie Guerrero had. So. Yeah, he had a, he's actually had uh, two mask for mask matches, in fact. He lost both of them and yet somehow continued to wear the mask. Go figure. But yeah, he's been around like almost every major company. He's wrestled almost anybody who's worth wrestling in his weight division. And uh, he retired in 2017, so he had a pretty long career. Spanning from his time basically debuting in New Japan 92, going all the way to 2017. That's a heck of a long career for a guy that a lot of us will probably have no idea about. So I recommend that everybody out there who's watching this today, go educate yourself on Takaiwa, especially if you like the junior heavyweight style. You know, more so, he's not one of the guys who's as much flippy and that kind of stuff. He's more, again, like a Dean Malenko. He uses a lot of straight grappling. He's got a lot of power moves. Uh, you know, in fact, if you love, like, big power moves, you're going to love the fact that this guy can do Steiner screwdrivers. He does enormous power bombs, brain busters. He's got an amazing clothesline lariat. And he even does that multiple power bomb like Brock Lesnar used to do. So he's a lot of fun to watch. I think he's someone that's really easy to get into. And he gels very well with whoever he's wrestling with. So, you know, a very versatile guy that's absolutely worth learning more about. And he's got a pretty darn good figure himself. You know, again, not one of the best figures in the line. I'd say for me, the body is what's interesting to me more than the head in this case, which is kind of unfortunate. You know, the head just, it doesn't quite do it for me. It's not the worst head sculpt we've seen, but it's just definitely not one of the best. But in terms of the accuracy of the body and everything else, I think it looks really good. And especially if you're going to be collecting more of the junior heavyweight style figures in this type of figure lineup, yeah, you're going to need to get Taikaiwa because he's notable enough, at least in Japan. And if you do your due diligence and check out more about him on YouTube and other places, you're gonna get some appreciation for his work as well. So yeah, that's our look today at Tatsuhito Takaiwa from his New Japan Superstar Figure Collection 32 figure. Now he hasn't had a ton of merchandise either, so this is really one of the best ways to get anything of him to represent his work and to honor his career. So uh, even just for that, I'd recommend getting it. So I'm Matthew, this has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed what we talked about today. If you liked what you saw here, please consider subscribing to the channel to see what we do here related to pro wrestling and everything else we cover on the channel. And hey, while you're at it, please give us a thumbs up for this vid. So we'll see you here next time. And until then, keep that fighting spirit burning.